Mr. Ginger. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity at this time of year to talk about the Community Foundation and rather than talking about uh, what we do in general terms, just highlight one thing. Uh, we've got uh, board member Mackie Moore here and our past chairman Pat Nelson here who uh, can tell you more about all of this. But uh, And you know about the Al Gillis South Haven Rotary Club Scholarship Fund and uh, you've heard about our early childhood endowment that uh, Entergy and Haley Forsyth contributed to here. And uh, Chip Johnson, Mayor of Hernanda, talked about what we've done about fighting childhood obesity. And I wanted to show you what we've done to use technology to bring a tool of learning to every child in the world. It's kind of odd. Uh, we started off with the notion of donor wanting to help public education, said that in his business technology had always helped productivity and efficiencies. So why can't we use technology to improve public education? Um, Wendell Davis uh, here made the first video. Uh, we decided to do videos, maybe you know, could swap them between classrooms or something. But then realized if you put it on the internet, then it was accessible to everybody in the school and the county and the state and the world. So that's sort of it escalated from something to carry a DVD back and forth to something to make available all over the world. Um, and Wendell was, had been with us from the very beginning. Uh, one of the real contributions he made was to in, involve a teacher, uh, Carrie Matthews, who's here, who, um, who teaches, unfortunately, in Olive Branch at Center Hill Elementary. <laughs> but she's, um, her fifth grade science students have had the highest science scores among fifth graders in Mississippi for not one, two, or three years, but four consecutive years. So you kind of begin, begin to believe it's something to the teacher there. Uh, so she's going to actually will show a video clip of the news uh, reporter going into her classroom and how she uses watchnote.org and how an excellent teacher uh, can motivate her students and she'll talk for a couple of minutes. But our main speaker is the director of um, watchnote.org. Uh, Larry Sanger, co-founder of Wikipedia, helped us develop, in fact he developed it. Uh, and he got very interested in it and it's a pretty innovative kind of site, I'm told. Uh, I don't understand all of it, so that's why we invited Joe Thomas, who is now directing it, to come and speak to explain a little bit about it to you, and I'll learn a whole lot more about it. Uh, Joe lives in Memphis, unfortunately, but uh, he's uniquely qualified to lead this program because, one, he's well-educated. His doctoral degree is from Johns Hopkins University, and he taught there. Uh, he's a good operations manager. He ran the promotional distribution center for Nike at their world headquarters out in Oregon. Uh, he's, uh, the last 20 years, he's been involved in uh, computer-based learning in the adult world uh, with such clients as FedEx, uh, Hilton Hotels, and the state of Texas. And uh, the fourth way he's uniquely qualified is he, he loves children. He's got five of them himself and uh, is very devoted to them and interested in their learning, just like he's devoted, interested in all the children being able to learn. So uh, I think Joe's going to show us a little video first, maybe. Um, be, we'll be going into Carrie's classroom. Okay. And by the way, at your table, there's a thing about the crystal ball. If you want to come, it's the only fundraiser for Community Foundation. Sheila Hirschberg is in uh, charge of the auction. If you get any items to donate, uh, Sheila will take those today or any day that you want to donate. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I'm, I'm privileged and honored to be part of the, the leadership team of WatchNode, but rather than talking about that for a second, let me just show you a video that was on Fox News 13 a while back that, that focused on what uh, Carrie Matthews is doing in her class with the, with the technology. Let's hope the technology works. <coughs> in education matters tonight, a new tool for learning developed in North Carolina State University. I've had a bit of a haircut since the video, <laughs> but that is me. Uh, I have been using technology for several years in my room, but WatchNo has just absolutely cut down the planning time and the search that it has taken in years past. Uh, I have been dubbed the teacher that has thrown out the textbooks. Uh, they did a news segment not too long ago, and that's how they started it. She's the teacher that threw out the textbooks. Um, I still have them, they just collect dust, because what I've discovered is that, especially in the area of science and social studies, those children aren't learning out of a book anymore. They actually are having to power down when they come to the classroom, because they're so stimulated at home, but they
but they're not getting that stimulation at school. Now, I use reading books all the time. Use AR books if you're familiar with that. But the textbook typically does not give them the exposure they need and the background knowledge they need for the concepts that we're teaching. Uh, a perfect example, and this happens weekly, but I'm going to give you last week's science lesson. Y'all ready for science, <coughs> science uh, class? Fifth grade in science, they have to know about constructive and destructive forces. They have to know the difference and understand what beach erosion is. They have to understand that a sand dune will move and that a sand bar is out in the ocean and it moves by water where a sand dune moves by wind. They have to understand that um, the side of the beach and beach erosion is caused from those waves. Yet last week when I surveyed my kids on Monday, when I started that lesson with them, I asked in a group of 25 students with each of my classes, I asked them how many had never been to the beach. And I had at least five or six in each class that have never been to the beach. Now how do you teach a child about beach erosion when they have never seen the ocean waves move? We're all very fortunate. You've probably all been to the beach. Even some of my kids that had been to the beach told me that they hadn't been, they were little, they were two, three years old. They don't really remember what the ocean waves were like. And so the best thing I could do was bring the beach to them. And so on Monday, I pulled up Watch Snow, and there are hundreds of videos on there, but there are a couple fabulous videos just on ocean waves. And they were eight minutes of just the ocean waves crashing up and down on the beach. And so for eight minutes, we took a trip to the beach at Center Hill Elementary School. And for eight minutes, those six children in my room had a better understanding of what ocean waves are like. Because a lot of your children at South Haven, down in Hernando, if they've never been to the beach, some of them have never even seen the Mississippi River. I know for a fact I have kids that have never seen the Mississippi River. Yet again, I have to teach about erosion on the river. The only thing that they understand is the pond that they drive by every day to get to the school. And pond water doesn't move. It's not the same. So a lot of times when they're reading it in a book or they're trying to do a worksheet on it and they just have a teacher talking to them, they don't understand. And they have to have that background knowledge. And so at, in my classroom at Center Hill and several schools across the county, we have these big, large screens. We have wonderful smart boards that have been provided to us through different funding programs. But one of the best ways we can use them is a program like Watch Know where we can bring those videos to them. On average, I probably show 10 to 15 videos a week that come directly from Watch Know. Most of them are two or three minutes long. They're not invasive. It's not like my children are just sitting there watching videos all day. But a two-minute video about the beach is a wonderful introduction and exposure for them. Um, so that, you know, I'm constantly asked what, what, it, what, what causes your scores, uh, you know, what are you doing in the classroom that is enabling your students to do so well on a state test. And a lot of that has to do with technology and greatly has been improved from Watch Now. Now, before the two years, I've probably been using it for about a year and a half. Prior to that, those videos were out there. Uh, those videos are on TeacherTube and SchoolTube and YouTube, and I could go on and list all of the different websites that have wonderful educational videos. But as a teacher, most of our teachers don't have the time or the knowledge to know how to go find those videos. So what Watch Now has done is taken all those videos and basically put them into one search engine so that if you are teaching on beach erosion or ocean waves, you can literally just type in on Watch Now ocean waves and those videos are going to pull up for you. It cuts down on the amount of time that you're having to search and plan for things in your classroom, which if you know a teacher, you know that their time is extremely valuable to them and this is one way we can help them out by doing that. I had three different presentations planned depending on what Tom and Carrie said, so I'm going to switch to number three because I think Carrie gave the best introduction to Watch Know that, that could be given. She's a practitioner, she's an educator, she's a teacher, she's committed to her students, and she's committed to using technology in the classroom. And we know that the national dialogue right now is all centered around technology.